I want to start talking this morning about this little guy. Um, this is called the genderbred concept. It's an uh, illustration that's been widely used for quite a while to um, help in training um, around the topic of transgender. I've been hearing uh, recently that people who are teaching the subject are saying that this concept, this drawing, um, doesn't work. That it's too simplistic. It just it doesn't it doesn't tell us enough. Um, I'm wondering if it's being used properly. The first thing you need to understand about the this uh, illustration, um, I've heard at times it presented as this explains transgender. That that that's actually the um, the most common thing I hear about this illustration. This explains transgender, but that's incorrect. And if you present it as this explains transgender, then you've gotten off on the wrong foot um, at the beginning anyway. This explains everyone. This explains, this, this concept is true for every person that walks on the face of this planet. Um, and that, that's how it needs to be taught. Every one of us has these four things. Every one of us has a gender. Every one of us has a sexuality, even if you don't like sex. Um, every one of us has a physical body of some sort, with various parts and whatever, whatever those parts are. And every one of us has a uh, self-expression that we adopt. Every one of us. There is not one person on this planet who doesn't. But one doesn't determine any of the others. But no person exists who doesn't have all four in some way. And that is the concept of the genderbred person. Now, it's a very common thing for people to roll sex, sexuality, and gender expression into what creates a, a person's gender. These things do affect how the individual and others perceive that person's gender, but don't actually determine it. This is true for cisgender people as well as transgender people. Sex, the body, doesn't determine a person's gender. We know this because a person can undergo sex reassignment surgery, and I'm going to make you know, some people uncomfortable saying this, but if we were to forcibly take a man who has a male gender and, you know, Let's let's do the, uh, the the horror movie scenario. We 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 capture him, we kidnap him, and we make him undergo sex reassignment surgery. Now, when that person wakes and you know comes to, they will more than likely start having gender dysphoria um, due to the fact that we've we've now altered their body um, to something that doesn't match their current gender. They went under the under the knife being male in sex and male in gender. They have now woken, um, perhaps being closer to female in sex, but still maintaining that male gender. We have met, now made this person transgender and they will experience gender dysphoria. The reason sex reassignment surgery and other treatments work for a transgender person is because we're bringing these two things into alignment. Now let me talk for a second about um, you know what is what is transgender. Tr uh, transgender we, we think of as a uh, lack of alignment between um, a person's sex and, and gender um, at times. It's been described that way. Now the treatments are designed to, or the purposes for the treatment, is to bring those two things into alignment. Now, really, if you think about it, if all things are brought into alignment and that person no longer experiences uh, any gender dysphoric issues, they could really adopt the, the, the title of cisgender at that point if they, if they wanted to, because now there's alignment. Gender dysphoria is very simple. Gender dysphoria is simply the lack of alignment between your physical presence and your gender. Um, I'm going to go into what is gender later, but 
it's, it's a lack of alignment between your physical presence and your gender. And so the treatments are designed, well, they're not even designed because most people don't understand, but what they're doing is bringing those two things into alignment to alleviate that horrible discomfort when things are not aligned because it is a horrible discomfort. All right, now, um, sexuality doesn't determine gender either. It's, uh, you know, but people, people still, they, they're, they're constantly confused. They, they think of um, being transgender as a sexuality. And there's several reasons for this, quite honestly. But, you know, sexuality doesn't determine your gender. Um, being transgender any more than it does being cisgender. Uh, you know, if it did, then all cisgender people would be straight, and all binary transgender people would be gay, and all gender fluid people would be bisexual. But of course we know this isn't the case. Um, your gender doesn't determine your sexuality, being transgender any more than it does cisgender. Hopefully most people understand what is sexuality. Now there's reasons why um, transgender people, well, several reasons why transgender people are thought of as um, being a sexuality by uh, the majority of society. And um, you know it goes back quite a ways. It goes back to the historical beginnings of the gay movement and, um, and back to Stonewall. But, you know, Stonewall was um, a, a group of gay men who were uh, ar arrested um, while in drag. And so that event um, has been later claimed by the uh, transgender community as being the start of the transgender movement as well. Now, whether or not these, these um, people who were uh, drag queens if some of them were transgender, could be, who knows, I don't know, I didn't ask them. Um, but that's, that's part of the historical beginning of that. The other thing is that um, so much about sex has been uh, wrapped up in to the um, uh, associated with transgender. There, there's basically um, three negative stereotypes that um, are associated with being transgender. There is the, um, the porn star, the prostitute, and the sexual deviant. And those are stereotypes that are then uh, placed over most transgender people. There's reasons why people go into... Um, the porn industry and prostitution. Um, much of it, I can't say all with any of it as far as the motivation of why you would go into something um, like that, but much of it is because uh, transgender people are denied jobs. You know, you, if you're denying somebody the ability to go get a job and um, pick up a paycheck, then they still have to feed themselves. They still have to clothe themselves. They still have to put a roof over their head. And yes, because we um, don't cover any kind of treatment under uh, insurance, well, you're, you're saying, well, just don't have treatment. Th that's what I was talking about as far as viable treatments. If you are not covering an, it under insurance, then it is no longer a viable treatment because the, the, the expense is too enormous to even try to um, absorb. Um, you know, for for a, a simple archaeectomy, you're talking uh, $15,000 out of pocket um, to have that procedure done. Insurance doesn't cover that. Uh, hormones, and until just recently, they were not covered under insurance. So this this motivates people to go into other um, uh, modes of work, and so that's where where you you've gotten your stereotype of um, 
porn star and, and prostitute um, most often. Now this is really going to piss some people off because um, the many things have been rolled into historically what is transgender. Transgender itself as a word um, started out as an umbrella term and covered any any vast range of uh, gender variant, whatever. Whatever we thought of as gender variant, well, then, you know, would slap the label transgender on it. Um, without any kind of real thinking about what does it mean to be transgender. So, um, cross-dressing males are also rolled into that. They have been historically. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to go into it at this point. I'm just going to move on. We'll talk about it later though. We will. Now, I'm going to move on to gender expression. Does gender expression determine your gender? You know, a lot of people will say, yeah. You know, girls wear dresses, boys wear pants. Do they? <laughs> really? Um, gender expression itself is, is much uh, more than just the clothes you wear. Um, Gender expression is a uh, is how you express yourself, and it's um, it's based on a uh, what is stereotypical as a baseline. Stereotypically, women do this. Stereotypically, men do that, and we think of that as our baseline for gender expression. Now, within different social groups, that baseline changes. Some things are more masculine, some things are more feminine, some things are more towards center. And gender expression, really, it changes, doesn't it? Particularly for women, but for men as well. Um, you know, for women, because we enjoy a uh, much broader range of gender expression without getting too much flack from society, you know, I can, I can go throw on my boyfriend's pants and run down to the store and nobody's going to, you know, get out the shotguns and the torches. But um, I've changed my gender expression uh, quite dramatically from maybe what I was wearing earlier, which was, you know, the ball gown or whatever, going to some event. Um, this, is, this is gender expression. Now, what I like to actually term gender expression simply as self-expression. You know, we take on our own self-expression. And self-expression, again, goes beyond um, clothing. It goes beyond mannerisms, because don't we all have varying mannerisms? Um, it's how we interact with the world. And gender expression, again, it's just measured from a baseline of what we think of as stereotypical. That's it. And you're either further to the, the feminine or further to the masculine based on whatever that social group is determining as the baseline of what is stereotypical for what is male or female. That's all gender expression is. It doesn't, doesn't actually determine your gender. So now, let's talk about gender. What is gender? Why am I female and not male? Um, you know, as far as the reasonings of, of that, why I was born with a female gender, I, I couldn't tell you. I, I'm, I'm not sure anybody is going to be able to. Um, but the reason that I am female is because I process information in a female way. There was a book that came out in, I believe it was the 80s, um, called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. And the author of that was noting the differences between how women think and how men think. Um, and this is what we think of as binary. The term binary has been confused as well. We, I, I've heard the word, word binary used to describe gender expression, which is incorrect. Binary is a is a, a term that should be used um, toward gender. And gender is really just your psychology. It's how you think. It's how you process information. So um, binary is a consistent gender. It's, it's male or female. 
thought process that is that is um, binary gender binary gender male binary gender female now what would be gender queer is a is a blending of these two it's not quite male it's not quite female but it's a consistent um, thought process and that is what encompasses a gender queer person's um, gender it's our thought process that determines our gender um, so what, what explains the um, gender fluid person? The gender fluid person um, feels that they are at times male, at times female, or, or feel that their um, thought process changes. I've talked to um, numerous people who are um, describe themselves as gender fluid, and they've also described that, well, my gender dysphoria comes and goes. Sometimes I have it, sometimes I don't. It's not persistent. And I would imagine that's because your, your um, physical presence and your gender are coming, into, coming in and out of alignment, um, causing uh, discomfort and a lack, you know, the discomfort goes away when things come back into alignment. Um, for me, for most people, that's a, it's a hard concept to understand a uh, thought process that changes that, that goes back and forth but I'm not going to you know, say it doesn't exist but it's it's difficult to um, wrap your head around versus something that is consistent so like the gender queer person who is a, a blending of a thought process um, that would be you know neither male or female or a blending of male and female um, because it's consistent, it's, it's easier to really wrap your head around. I've never experienced the male gender, quite honestly, but I know it exists. You know. the, um, where we get messed up in talking about this subject is a lack of understanding of what is gender. And because gender now is being used in the way I'm describing, it's used to describe a psychology and not a physical presence. Um, this is where most confusion comes from in having conversations with people on the topic of transgender. Because for the cisgender person, everything aligns. Their, their physical presence and their gender are the same, either male, male, female, female. And there is no lack of alignment. So we're raised, and historically, we've always used the word gender um, in a way that is synonymous with sex. So we use sex and gender as being the same word, same meaning, same understanding, same everything. Um, because more, peop more transgender people are actually opening their mouths now, um, we're starting to understand that isn't the case, that gender is something uh, separate from your physical presence. And this is true for everyone. It is true for the cisgender person as well. You just don't recognize the separation. So for you, it doesn't seem as if there's a difference. And it's hard for you to understand. And that's OK. Um, we're going to be patient with you. And we're going to be understanding with you. Um, probably much more than you have with us. This is the gender bread concept. These four things that are separate but integrated in each and every one of us. And the combination that comes together after things integrate is different. So I've heard many um, genderqueer people describe the, the, the fact that they don't experience uh, gender dysphoria. And so that makes sense as well, because gender dysphoria is a lack of alignment. That's what causes gender dysphoria. If the, the gender queer person, the person who identifies, describes themselves as gender queer, is not feeling any sort of lack of alignment, then it would make sense that they would not feel gender dysphoria. Everything for them aligns, um, you know, regardless of what uh, body parts they currently have. Um, they're comfortable with within it within their gender as well because their their gender itself is a blending. Um, 
so yeah, it makes it makes perfect sense that uh, a person like that does not have gender dysphoria. Now, where it becomes problematic is where um, gender queer people come forward and say gender dysphoria does not exist um, because they're not experiencing it. Well, you're you're doing the same thing that cisgender people are doing. Gender dysphoria does not exist because I'm not personally experiencing it. Um, but for many transgender people who are, you know, it's typically for the, for the binary or the gender fluid, gender fluid experiencing it from time to time, binary transgender people are experiencing gender dysphoria persistently until they find treatment. And as those things come into alignment, they start feeling better. Wow, kind of works that way, doesn't it? But, um, you know, that's, that's basically how it works. And this is the concept around the uh, genderbred concept. And this is how it needs to be, be taught. And I would hope that um, people start moving into, into that. I'm going to talk more about it. Um, this is going to be my last year of speaking, my last year of involvement in anything really um, to do with this subject matter. And, and um, the reason being is, is for my own health. Um, my health isn't that great, and this takes a, a lot out of me. Um, at the end of this year, it will be uh, three years of, of total devotion, um, round-the-clock devotion to um, the subject matter. And uh, so I'm going to be stepping back. And I would hope that I'm going to be leaving behind a lot of teachings, a lot of, um, a lot of speakings, and a lot of films. And that information is all going to be there for you. It's going to continue to be there for you always, um, as long as the Internet survives, I guess. And so I would hope that you would take those learnings and, and then move forward um, with the teachings, because education really is the, the key to all of this. Once we start understanding, then we start losing our fear of what we didn't understand before. Um, so until next time, I'll talk to you later, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.